All right. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. What's going on? How How is everyone doing? Welcome back to another Well Done Tanks live stream. It feels like it's been a while, actually. We've done a lot of uh, uh, members-only streams and stuff as we've been building the fish room. But it feels like it's just been a long time since we've actually partied out here in the on a full full live stream. So hope everyone's doing well. Glad to see the few people we got rolling in here. Hopefully we'll get a few more. Uh, it is Sunday. So Sunday is generally when I'm going to be live streaming. It's just easier with my, my work schedule and everything else and the times I get home. <clears throat> but let me know if the sound is coming through. I, I, we're working with new programs still. So we're trying to learn, trying to uh, uh, gain some you know better, greater knowledge of things. But a little earlier today, I was going to uh, live stream at 5, my time, 5 p.m. Was it Central? <clears throat> but I honestly was having making some really good progress on the fish ranch and just like didn't want to stop. So I kind of like, I kind of, pu I pushed it back to six to <clears throat> give me that extra hour, you know, to get some more stuff done in there. Um, thank you for letting me know this sounds clear. We got Skippity coming in of uh, what's up squad exhausted from packing and loading a truck. The other Tiffany, you're moving, right? So that must be what that's for. Packing and loading a truck is very exhausting. I know that one there. Yeah, we still got so with it's honestly it came down to of uh, build fish ranch or make the live stream pretty. We landed on build fish ranch. Um, I honestly think the next test is I have a light to my left. I have a another identical light that I just need to bring over to my right to bring this side. I think that's what's causing it because I, I never had the rainbow effect previously. <clears throat> there isn't anything crazy going on in the background of me. Um, I just think it's, uh, I think it's lighting now, if the other thing I think it could be is there the, the focus of the camera, because on the Canon, there's no autofocus when I'm live streaming. I just really don't want to spend the money to get a Sony, which would allow me to have autofocus while live streaming. So we'll see. So the first test is I seen to move, I seen to move a light over. Um, but honestly, after we get, we finish up the fish ranch. After Aquashella, I would say I hopefully have some uh, some time to bring another light over, test some things out. Is it just yeah? I mean, call it lazy, but it's it's just I don't know priorities you can say. So I mean, it, it was different though building a fish room and let's see, it was eighty three degrees in the fish room and like seventy percent humidity. So we got some uh, we got some fun things we got to figure out there. But squad is in the house. What's up, Leo? Good to see you there, Brian Pease. We got lurking. Mystery Snow Guardians, hello. Thanks for joining. I've been seeing you pop up in a lot of other streams, so I'm super happy to have you here. It's very generous of you, but I do appreciate it, man. Oh, do we have the new, uh, what is it, the the member uh, the member messages or whatever they are? You get like one a month or something there? But Lee, let's get them good. Thanks for, let's see, nine months. That's awesome there, man. If we don't forget to hit the like button, I appreciate it. Also, betting if I'm getting a bridging group of Snow Whites. Snow Whites are pretty. They're definitely one of the newer bristle mill morphs that uh, Pleco Ceramics has been working on and they're importing in. So that's why I'm su I'm, I'm super happy that I have the Wobbin Muster that I can I know came from Pleco Ceramics. That was a cool, that was a cool purchase. Um, there's a little bitty, but we got we got them. It's cool to see here. Jimmy P coming in. Good to see you, man. Finally made a live stream. Well, I finally am doing a live stream. But Lindsay, I'm happy to have you here lurking. So, yeah, this this uh, aquarium is an absolute mess. Uh, we got some a lot of plants growing in here, kind of holding tank. Angelfish keep breeding up a storm. They just don't have the space yet to raise the fry or meet a poem, all that kind of a thing. Um, yes, yeah, that damn rainbow effect. God, we gotta figure that out. But um, things are moving forward. The little Evo we have. I need to do a video on this. It's. I think I found my new favorite coral of like all time. It's going to be awesome there. So that'll be a fun video to do because I have video ideas of like great beginner tank, intermediate tank, you know, and then potentially advanced tank kind of a, a thing there. But Matt, good to see you. Wobble misters are great. All of mine are males, unfortunately, still pretty fish. I bought a group of eight of them. So like I'm screwed if out of a group of eight, I only get males. That would be 
oh, that'd be gut wrenching. That was an expensive eight to purchase. So that would be <clears throat> that'd be gut wrenching if I like got all males. But uh, hey, man, if I if I end up with a couple females, I well, we can we can maybe work something out there. But um, the ones I am concerned about though are the uh, the brilliant bristle nose. Those are the ones I have. I bought three of them, and when you do the ratios, four fight. If you buy four four fish, five fish, six fish, you you really increase your odds of having pairs and breeding pairs and males versus females. So to have three, when they first got to me, I did some close inspection, and I think I have for sure one male and for sure one female. So yeah. Fingers crossed. Me too, man. Really fingers crossed that I have males and females on the brilliant bristle nose and males and females on the wobble musters. Um, and then I know for sure I have a male albino and a massive female albino, ma massive female albino. It was interesting watching her. She wants to breed. She really wants to breed, but this is the first time I have not had a cave big enough for a bristle nose to trap the female in she's a monster so <clears throat> fortunately though with the pleco ceramic pleco ceramics lineup we got a new cave we get to work there um and i and i haven't said it in a while either um definitely if you're and hopefully we got some mods that can help put the links in stuff here too the uh if you guys the the codes are still active so code weldon gets you 20 percent off your entire order with pleco ceramics they're a standing you know sponsor of our channel they do amazing work I know they're still waiting on me to make my video of the uh, <clears throat> their DIY paste food. Um, I'm getting to that point where I want to do a video justice. And then with uh, Houston Manzanita, use the code WELDEN20. You get 20% off your entire order. And if you're looking for some killer wood pieces, Adam just put up like 80 new pieces of wood this weekend. Um, and Adam's one of the best guys to work with. And I'm looking forward to going over to meet him personally, finally kind of a thing. Uh, with Daniel as we're helping Daniel get his project set up and going. But yeah, Mountain or, um, <clears throat> Pleco Ceramics and Houston Manzanita, two amazing companies I highly recommend. Um, and it's I'm very fortunate to have a local-ish business that imports Pleco Ceramics uh, Plecos. <clears throat> so that's where I got my blob of musters from. But uh, Chubbs Aquatics, what's up, dude? It's been a while. Good to see you here. Who else am I missing? Mountaintop sneaking in here. Texas Fisherman, what's up, man? Guys, is it was it on Instagram? I think it was an Instagram. Texas Fisherman has some of the nicest angel fish I've seen. Ooh, those double blacks are beautiful. Doing a very, doing very, very well there. Very well there. So, yes, things are moving along here. So we, um, if you follow me on uh, on TikTok, I call it Tickfish. Uh, Instagram, and if you remember. You've definitely seen some of the uh, the updates of the fish room. The the video we posted on Friday was you know talking about challenges of building a fish room. That was all accurate. That was all there. But the progress we've made from that video to now, uh, I the big push this week, and it's probably gonna it's probably gonna be you know me getting home from work, getting the kid to bed, and then going and spending like an hour or two tinkering. Is I need to get plywood on the racks, get the tanks painted. And we're off to the races. Like we're we could get water, just gotta get water them and get them cycling. I like get all that process going. But then the fun part begins of actually making them, you know, planted and getting some driftwood in there. So we still got a lot of work to go. Uh, but it's it's gonna be it's gonna be really fun to do though. But I'm really excited to see this coming together. I'm really excited to see this coming together because it's this is honestly, I think every fish room I've done, I've had favorite things about it. And this one in, in a lot of aspects will be my best one by some way. You know, it's, you learn things as you go. So the first, I guess you could say the first fish room was honestly just a room in, in one of my houses of, uh, missed a couple of years ago back in Utah. <clears throat> just one of the spare bedrooms we had. I had, you know, tanks on dressers and stuff. And I finally hooked up one little air pump. And then we built the, I called it the fish nook. Uh, if you go back in my playlist, you can find it. It was an alcove in our basement and what i liked about it was it was like an open area to the basement so as soon as you walked into the basement you were greeted with this, this massive display of tanks and it was it was beautiful but it was also difficult because i couldn't heat the room so i learned some things there the next fish room was you know small 
But what I learned from that though is we did so much in a small space. I think we had what was it, 56 square feet, where um, currently now we're roughly at like a hundred square feet. So we've kind of almost doubled in size in a way. But is that biscotti nanya? So happy to see you here. So this is why I'm happy to do live streams again, like get this going at a decent time here, so we can do these streams and get to see everybody back in here. And so I'm sorry, my hair is kind of a mess. It was a uh, jump in the shower, so I didn't like if there was a smell of vision on this. Like, oh yeah, you guys would have smelled me for sure. But um, this time around, though, it was interesting. It was interesting of having to kind of build my own walls. Like we really didn't have. <laughs> a basement area to like wall in like this was kind of you know put up some walls get some things going get insulation in where building in my basement that fish room it still had to meet code right it was still part of the inspection where <laughs> this is kind of flying by the seat of my pants and making it work but i am i'm very excited for the size of tanks we're gonna be working with i'm very excited for the fish we're gonna be working with i um we were talking with the members last night about potentially having like a, a center tank rack and that, that quickly got vetoed out. And I'm glad it did because as I was working in the fish ranch today, getting the air system built, um, I realized that I would have hated having that in the middle where if you, if you've watched for a while from the last fish room to this one, you know, I kept saying, I want more space. I want more space. I want to be able to move around where this time I can actually I can move around in this. I'm excited to have my daughter come in and help me, you know, feed fish and Tucker can come in there and hang out with me as we're doing things. And so it, it's turned out well, <clears throat> it's really, it really has turned out well. And I think we're going to do some good things with it. So, uh, this weekend, um, yeah, it's this weekend. Jeez. I, I will be at Aquashella. So if you are attending Aquashella Dallas and you, you recognize me, please come say hi. Or feel free to, you know, let me know you're there. I I'm debating on if I think one day I'll probably wear my old school, uh, well done, well done tanks t-shirt. I still, I really don't have a good shirt to wear. So one day I may wear the well done tanks t-shirt with the, the fish, giving the thumbs up and <laughs> probably one day I'll just wear a regular t-shirt or something. But if you see me, please come say hi. I'm going to be in, in, uh, you know, ooh and an ah, and I had the VIP ticket. So I'm going to go hang out and <laughs> see who's there in the YouTube booth kind of a thing. And, you know, I plan on attending some of the talks and so it'll be, it'll be a good time there. So Texas fishing will be there. So I, yeah, I hope to meet a lot of you. I really do. <laughs> Um, I will have my camera with me. I, I want to make a video about it, but this is honestly my first time though attending. We'll see how it goes. It's going to be, uh, it'll be, it'll be a good time. I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be a fun weekend. And I kind of have, I have, I'm kind of on the hunt for a particular, um, fish I want to there. Wear the wife eater shirt. <laughs> that is for members eyes only. <laughs> I wear so I just wear I just wear cheap tank tops as undershirts since I've just always worn an undershirt my entire life. But now that it's so freaking hot down here in Texas, some days, like last night, like when I'm working in the fish room, I just don't have a t-shirt on. And then when I do, we've been doing some uh, member streams. We have a new series going on. So if you want to become a member and see what the new series the series is, it's usually late at night, and like I joke that uh, like clothing is half optional. <laughs> But anyways, so yeah, we'll be Aquashella. We'll be doing that. Um, got some videos I got to get filmed. Like, but that's what I'm excited though is to get the, the the content you know rolling on these to do fish room updates and show you how I built the fish room. Because this one, I mean, furthermore, I think this one can really embody people of you can do it too. And I have the air pump that's running these tanks behind me, and I have all the tanks down on the floor holding all the fish. Um, I'm excited. I am so excited to show you that air pump and then show you a rack that I think would be a perfect combination of I have a little bit of space in my laundry room. I have a little bit of space in my garage. I have a little bit of space in my my basement or my wife's okay with it being in the in the family room. You know, it's or my husband's okay with it being in the family room. I mean, we can go dean status and I have a three foot section in my bathroom. Like I'm excited to show this on a way of good budget. You can basically build your own fish room, right? Like you don't have to have 20 plus tanks to call it a fish room. I mean, we call it fish rooms where it's this room is dedicated to fish kind of a thing, but it's 
I think it's going to be a great option of showing get a little bit of space. You can make a killer setup with this and expand what you're doing kind of thing. So, but more air or less. So more, more or less air in a frack container. Well, the methane blue is being changed out. Um, I would, so my opinion, my little bit of experience, it's, I'm sorry about what's up. I just start to crack it up here because Daniel, Daniel, my parents will only let me go to Aqua Shell if I get straight A's. I thought you had like, come on, come on, man. You got to be getting straight A's. Like, you are taking some crazy courses, but uh, hey, that's uh, if my if I was your age, interested in fish, and my parents told me I could go to Aqua Shell if I got straight A's, I'd be studying my books off. But I was never a straight A student. But good luck. Well, good luck, man. Hopefully, you do some cool stuff there. <laughs> but back to Mountain Top here. Um. I'm going off of what I've done and I'm also going off of what I've seen others do. If you can get it to where I think I've, I had it like once and I'm sure you have some of it, the rigid airline tubing, that like quarter inch acrylic rod, but it's, it's allows you to slip airline over the end of it. If you can kind of put that down into a corner ish on your breeder box to where the air is coming out like very fine like it's almost like it's if you had um an air stone inside of one of the sponge filters the air coming out is really fine if you can get it down to where it's really fine stream of bubbles to where it's rippling the surface but it's faster than one you know one bubble one bubble one bubble one bubble if that makes sense so i wonder if you could accomplish it by using like a usb air pump you know usb nano air pump putting a valve on the air pump and then turning it way far down to where it's instead of one bubble one bubble it's bubbles it's a, it's a repeating bubble but it's not boiling the surface that does that make sense i feel like i'm i'm, I'm flopping this i'm trying to explain that where it's it's less air, but it's a fine-tuned adjustment of air where <clears throat> it's not blowing the fryer on the tank, but it's still rippling the surface to you know a gas exchange and you know get the oil film built up. So <clears throat> hopefully that kind of hopefully that, hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, and the MB we're using is just a quick abbreviation for the methylene blue. So Mountaintop's got some uh, awesome things going on there. But we're almost 20 minutes into this. So topic tonight that I have on this, and this was um, something, honestly, that I've been talking with Mountaintop a lot about. This is honestly something that got – I've, I've talked about this in the past, <clears throat> and I, I really need to make like a dedicated video on this too. But it's, it's interesting, though, of – so we – what really sparked this idea again, and I wanted to talk about it again, was we've started a new project, a new fish tank in the house. So we have uh, some, and the members have seen it. We have some space downstairs <clears throat> that my wife asked me <clears throat> if we could put in a display tank downstairs. And when the wife says she wants it, I'm not going to say no, because that means I get to play more fish. So she asked though if it could particularly be. Um, a, a saltwater tank. She wanted a reef tank. She wanted to have something that was bright, uh, fun to look at, fun colors. And I trained, you know, tried to explain that we could do, you know, African cichlids. We could do this. We could do this. And she was set on, no, I want a saltwater tank. I really want to, she wants to learn more about it. And when she's interested in it, I say, I'm, I want to help with that. So we, we agreed that we'd go get a saltwater tank. So we talked options of doing a 40 breeder there, of wrapping the, I have an extra pet coast on the metal pet coast stands. We talked about doing a 40 breeder, wrapping it in plywood, making it look nice. Um, she wasn't a huge fan of how the 40 breeder looks. So I was going to drill it, make, put a sump on it. Um, when I kind of did all the calculations of um, equipment I wanted for it, and these were not over the top options, uh, it, we, we kind of had a budget and it was, it was higher than what I really wanted. Well, it fit the budget, but it was also, <clears throat> that's a lot of money to put towards this. So I took her down to the, our local fish store, uh, Cinco Ranch Aquariums, Cinco, 
Yeah, single wrench corners. The ones that I, I really like. They're really close to us. They're great owners, <clears throat> great selection. Uh, and I, I really enjoy working with them. So that's where I, based off the customer service I get there, that's where I'm going to give my business to. Um, so we went there. I, I knew they had some tanks in stocks. So I took her down there. We looked at you know rimless tanks. We looked at the innovative marine tanks. We looked at, uh, they had some JBJ tanks in stock. We really looked at more further things of, Tanks that I would have to either like run a canister on, I could put a sump on versus an all-in-one tank like the Innovative Marine and the JBJ tanks. So we we did some shopping there. We looked at there and she came down to like the style of the all-in-one tanks. They're very sleek. They're very, they're, they're, they're clean tanks. Like they are sharp looking tanks. Um, <clears throat> she wanted to still have me build a stand so we could wrap it in the wood we wanted to um you know match the house it was very much of a centerpiece in our living room she wanted this to be a very nice display aspect of it so while we're there shopping uh, the innovative marine tank we're looking at was the innovative marine 30 gallon nouveau fusion and then we're looking at the jbj was it a 65 gallon all-in-one so the two options we're looking at and the Innovator Marine 30 gallon is longer, so it's three feet long, but it's not as, you know, the depth isn't there necessarily, where the JBJ was only two feet long, deeper, but it was also taller. So that length, width, width, length, width and height ratio was, they were both different on each tank. So we we started discussing of how they would look in the space we had for it, where we wanted to put it. Uh, and then, then she started asking questions though, like, what fish can we put in each of these? You know, the 65 gallon is technically more volume of water, but you also have to, in my opinion, take in the, you know, the ratio of length and stuff. So, but we're, for tonight's all intents and purposes, we're going to focus more on like volume of water and different things of this nature. So we went back into their saltwater section, uh, the way the store set up, you enter in the store up front, they have you on know, the sales counter, there's freshwater fish, all the freshwater selection. You move to the back of the store and they have all their reef selection, you know, corals and fish, salt mixes, everything of that nature. So we, we went back there um, and we started, I, and I told her, I said, you know, pick out fish you see in here that you like. Like I actually want to, you know, see what kind of fish you like. And then we'll keep discussing of what tank you want to get. So she showed me some fish and talked about fish. I like this and I like this and I like this. And um, one of their newer employees they have working for him, a good kid. He's very, he's, he's, he's a good kid. He's working really hard on learning everything he can about fish to be, you know, that much more efficient and helpful. So he, you know, very generous, comes over, asks us, do we need help? And I explained to him what we we're doing and, he knows who I am. I've been in there enough at this point. I think I was in there like every day this past week, uh, just how it worked out. But we uh, explained to him, we have this space, we're doing this tank. And his he made a comment, and I'm not, I'm not going to say this is wrong, all right? And this, he made the comment of larger tanks are easier to maintain. And that's, that's, that, that's the comment. So I told that. Appreciate it. You know, a good conversation. Um, ultimately, we decided on the Innovator Marine 30 gallon primarily because the footprint of the tank just it fit the space where we wanted to put it better. This flow is better. The feng shui is there. Uh, but that comment stuck with me because this is not the first time I've heard this. And it's like I say, it's not, in my opinion, because uh, apparently in the past, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but in my opinion, uh, well, in the past, I got in trouble by somebody through a third party that I was saying too many things and not putting my opinion in front of it. So, but this this stream is actually my opinion aspect. That comment of larger tanks are easier to maintain. You know, they require less maintenance, kind of a thing. I want to I want to break that down, and I want to break down my opinion of beginner tanks and what we should be teaching people. Well, I think what we should be teaching people, how I teach people, how I approach it. And this can be applied to both saltwater, freshwater kind of a thing. So he, you know, said furthermore too, he's like, you know, in a 30 gallon tank, you may have to do more water changes to keep up with the maintenance of the tank. But a 65 gallon tank, you don't have to do as many water changes to keep up with, you know, the, the maintenance of the tank. There's some truth to this. 
So the way I started looking at it, and the way I kind of want to explain this is if we if you take one guppy and you put it in a five gallon tank, you put one guppy in a 10 gallon tank, you put one guppy in, let's say a 30, 40, 50, all the way up to like a 120 gallon tank. We can test and show that if we feed each individual fish the same amount of food, that five gallon will technically get dirtier or the parameters of the water will get off faster than the larger tanks, right? Because there's only five gallons of water for that waste to be diluted into versus where we have, you know, one small fish in a 120 gallon tank, there's a massive volume of water for that waste to get diluted into. But of course, we're never just going to keep, you know, one fish in these tanks. So then I, the way I approach this, and I'm curious to see what you guys think, and I'm curious if it's going to be a debate. I'm I, I like these discussions aspects, <laughs> is every time somebody comes to me and they figure out that I'm a fish nerd, and they figure out that I like to keep fish in the glass blocks, and I do this, and I've been crazy about this, and, they, and then it leads into, well, I want to start a tank. What tank size would you recommend? The way the immediate question I ask them is how much maintenance, like what, what work are you willing to put into this? Well, what do you mean? I mean, are you willing to take a bucket of water, you're a bucket, siphon out five gallons, dump it, refill said bucket, and dump it back into the tank? Well, how often do I have to do that? Once a week. Oh, yeah, I can do that. I can siphon out, you know, five gallons of water and dump it and bring another bucket back over. That's easy. Okay, so then I then I break it down to of are you willing to do that once a week, but are you willing to do two bucketfuls? Oh, yeah, that's easy. Okay, are you willing to do three bucketfuls? Whoa, now we're kind of moving into a point you're telling me once a week I have to drain three buckets, refill three buckets, haul them back over to the tank, and dump them in. Yes, that's, that's my, my approach to it. <laughs> Now, I know that most of you are going to be saying, like, why are you still using buckets? But also, let's let's break this down to on beginners. How many of you, when you actually started this hobby, how many of you actually knew, like, the Python system was or used the Python system? I didn't. I had no idea that it existed until I saw it in a YouTube video, right? When I started, I was changing water on a 20-gallon tank with a 5-gallon bucket. And there's even days in like the last fish when we still drain water to a five gallon bucket. Granted, we had the auto water change to refill it back up, but it's, you know, it's, it's the more advanced I am now, I change all these tanks in here in the Python system. Super simple. But on a beginner standpoint, you need to help them understand the maintenance that's going to go into this. And on the beginner standpoint, most people, I'm not going to say everybody, but most people start with siphon water out to a bucket, walk bucket over to the toilet or tub, sink, yard, dump it, take said bucket back over, <laughs> refill it, bring that back to the tank, dump it in. And if you get into, I mean, there's so many things. I mean, I think bulk reef supply is my favorite on their uh, dramatization of the tired of hauling five gallon buckets back and forth, get an auto water change system. But then, but this is on the beginner standpoint. Remember, this is on beginner standpoint. So, Typically, I say that towards a freshwater system. So now let's break this down of larger tanks are easier to maintain. Okay, let's say you get a 55 gallon. The, the most common tank sizes I see people start with are a 20 gallon, a 29 gallon, or a 55 gallon. Uh, because, you know, that 55 gallon is that, that massive tank, these beginners, the big tank, the beginners. It's, it's cool. It's amazing. You know, the 29 gallon is still that easier aspect of it you know it's big but then the 20 gallon is something that people think is manageable my first tank was a 20 gallon so uh tempo coming in here i love what's up man built my built my own the attachment for water beds see there's numerous ways to do this but it's also on the aspect of that did you when you first started though like still do the bucket brigade today on certain tanks see so you still use that bucket sometimes. And I mean, 
I still use that bucket sometimes. I had had to refill this tank really quick beforehand, and I didn't have time to hook up the python. So I threw on, I threw you know, five gallon bucket of water in. So it's 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 that aspect. So the maintenance of the tank, you know, now we're only talking water changes. So now we get into what kind of fish do you want? What do you want to do with the fish? Now you have to teach them how to feed. Now you have to teach them not overfeed them, do more water changes. You know, and then let's say they get tired of hugging, you know, law. Logging, hugging, hauling, hauling, hauling that bucket back and forth. So they're going to stop doing water changes to now where it's, you know, it's going even worse. I mean, it's, it's all these scenarios we have to teach beginners is larger tanks are easier to maintain technically on water parameter side, but not technically though on other aspects of this. If you gave a beginner a 220 gallon tank, that's a ma- like most people are getting, that's a massive tank. How am I going to maintain this thing? Because what you also don't tell them is like this 65 gallon right here, that whole front panel is algae and I don't even care. <laughs> I love it right now. The fish are loving life in there. It's a healthy tank. I'm growing plants out in there, holding some angel fish and some gudgeons. But it's, do you teach people that, hey, you're going to need to, you know, scratch, like wipe off the front of the tank? Well, how often do I have to go to do that? It's gonna be faster to do it on a 10 gallon versus a 65 gallon, right? But it's but the, the, that water change level, the parameters thing is really what I'm focusing on this one. So, you know, then because it we were shopping for a, a saltwater tank, a reef tank, and now it's a whole nother level of our larger tanks easier to maintain. And the way the the video series I'm gonna kind of do is I have the Fluval Evo 13.5. We now have the Innovative Marine 30 gallon is I personally think this Fluval is a great beginner tank, excellent beginner tank. It's large enough that you can have some fun corals in there and some, you know, some fun clownfish in there to kind of get your feet, you know, wet, <laughs> no pun intended, of, you know, handling a saltwater tank, understanding the aspect of that. You know, then we, I like the, thir- the Innovative Marine 30 gallon because that's going to be my, this is the next like intermediate tank size, right? Uh, but we still have to break it down to of how are you going to get water for this tank? Most beginners don't have RO system. So most beginners don't make their own water. Most beginners don't want to mix their own water. So they go to their local fish store. Now I've seen people haul out like 40 gallons of water out of a local fish store before. And that's a lot of water to me. So it's interesting though. It, it definitely is interesting there. Like <clears throat> I would vote yes, a bigger tank is better for beginners. They allow more relay. They do. But is that leeway a dangerous thing for beginners? Because what I've seen sometimes is on bigger tanks, beginners tend to put more fish into the tank, <laughs> right? How many times have you seen a, a 10 gallon just booming full of a fish or the the most common one i've seen is that five gallon tank with like six goldfish in it right and then then the facebook police start going on them and they just rag them but i think most beginners when they get a bigger tank their first thought is i can put more fish in this i can put more fish into this i can do more fish in this you know then they start i got well, more fish i gotta feed more more fish i gotta feed more to where now can they keep up with it um you know, I, I had a friend, a well, a, uh, a previous friend that a past acquaintance, shall we say, <clears throat> um, they got gifted a 55 gallon tank. They wanted my insight. So I did, every, I did my best to kind of have this same conversation with them. What are you willing to do with it? Um, and, but ultimately, it's not my tank, right? Ultimately, I can't force them to do anything they don't want to do. Well, they ended up putting in. I think four common plecos. They ended up putting. If they put a, a bunch of fish into this thing, I think by the by the end of it, they had like almost thirty f- plus fish in this tank. Um, I mean, a mixture of common bristlenose, babunas, angelfish, barbs. I mean, it was a it was a smorgasbord of fish, and they like they finally messaged me when they're like, Hey, we can't keep up with this anymore. Like, we're tired of this. And, um, I, I taught them like how to test their water and stuff. And the nitrates were all, like 
they were off the charts. They were so high. So there's leeway in bigger tanks, absolutely. But it's also if you can teach somebody to manage a 10-gallon or a 20-gallon tank, now we start moving into – I want a bigger tank, but now how I want a bigger, how can I do water changes, you know, faster, easier, so we start moving into those systems. So I definitely, I will agree there's leeway in bigger tanks, but I also think there's just some added difficulties in bigger tanks of what are people willing to do on the maintenance side of things. Now, granted a larger tank with a appropriate stocked amount of fish in there, you can go longer time without doing water changes. I mean, that's a, that's a whole other conversation I want to have in a, in a fun topic too, of why do we actually change water? And that's one reason why I'm uh, really excited about this fish room of not having auto water change, but focusing things like plants and, and you know substrates and bacteria growth and all this stuff too is I want to, I really want to push that bar of, cause I've never done it before. We've seen people do it. Sorry. I need to really trim my mustache. It's driving me nuts. It tickles my nose sometimes. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Query Co-op is probably the biggest advocate for this right now is, you know, can we do less water changes? Can we use plants to do less water changes? So I'm really excited to kind of test this myself on my own fish room is in a 20 gallon tank with, you know, wood cats. Cause I have the galaxy wood cats. We have wood cats in there. Are they going, how long can I go without doing water changes? Right? How long can I can I shuffle this around? So it's 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 gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see there. I mean, my first tank was a 20 gallon, and I remember it very vividly. Opened it on Christmas. I filled it up with water that day. The next day, uh, we went to Petco, and I brought home I think like 10 fish, put them in there. One survived because I just didn't understand everything yet. So it's. This is why these are always kind of fun debates and fun things to do here is <clears throat> I personally, I am of the opinion that larger tanks are not easier for beginners. And I, and I say that on the basis of you have to teach them to handle tanks. Like you have to teach them to handle the maintenance on it. So if, if you can help them understand appropriate stock levels, a 10-gallon tank can be very fun for them. If you can help them understand appropriate stock levels, 20-gallon tank can be you know very fun for them. Um, I think even ones that certainly more stability, 100 pounds of a 10-gallon can go on pretty much anything safely. That's right. A 200 pounds of a 10, 20-gallon starts becoming a little more hit and miss for non-purpose built stance. This is true. And this is actually an aspect that I didn't even think about this. I'm the crazy guy. If you dig way back into the channel, um, we had the first 75 gallon tank. We built a stand for that. That was rock solid. No problems there. But then we had an old dresser. And this thing was a sturdy dresser, but I had a 40 gallon tank on it and two tens. But then we had a little like computer stand rolling the gig back in a corner. And that thing had no business holding tanks, but it did. Like the thing had no business holding tanks. Oh, that was terrible. But it was it it worked. It's terrifying. It worked though, but it was terrifying. So that's that's actually a point too. I didn't even think about there is it's when you help people understand these things, then you can start moving forward to things. The other part too is like on on saltwater tanks. You know, we I. I talk to people of, are you willing to mix up your water or are you going to go to the fish store? <clears throat> Nine times out of 10, people say, I'm going to go to the fish store. I mean, I'll be honest with you. Right now, I am purchasing my salt water from my local fish store uh, to do water changes on my little flu ball. I have an RO filter I plan on hooking up, but I'll, I'll, I'll be honest though. I don't know if I plan on mixing my own salt. I, I don't know. I will make my own RO water for top offs. But I don't know if I'm gonna mix salt in my in my own. It's 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 work. Like it's a lot of work. It's it's frustrating work too for me. I've never had good experiences mix, mixing salt water, but it's it's one of those things of right. Like it's added expense. It's added time. Are you willing to drive to the fish store once a week, every other week, to pick up? 
Like I, I figured out that it was about thirteen dollars for me to get ten gallons of salt water from my local fish store. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> this little fluval tank here, it's like a two and a half ish water gallon water change I do on it, and it's it's great. Like it's it's doing great. And I won't do any dosing on this tank either because it's just all easy corals. I won't even do any dosing in my 30 gallon downstairs. Um, don't have any plans to anyways yet. Um, but that tank's going to be a lot of fun too, though, because I, I have some really fun ideas for that. And the lights I'm using on that tank, I think you guys are gonna really going to like those. Um, show some budget stuff there. But it was it's one of those interesting things, though, of you know balancing water parameters, balancing this and helping beginners understand this to when they understand it, like now, since I've been here and have had these tanks in this room as we're you know building the fish ranch, I've done more testing of my tanks than I ever have in my life. Like in my entire fish keeping career, I've done more testing on these. One, it's nice to have a reliable, easy, quick test strip. But two, my want to understand I feel like we go through different phases in fish keeping. And this time I'm really in this phase of, all right, I don't have auto water change. I didn't really want to mess with auto water change on this one. I want to test to understand what's happening in my tanks. I want to test to see, you know, what's going on with my pH. I mean, I'm already coming out with my water filtration on my house. I'm coming out on some fairly low pH. Like how long can I go without crashing that? And, you know, do I need a, hook up to a hose bib to get water into the fish room that's not attached to the water filtration system to you know bring that pH up a little bit. So it's all these things I'm really excited to see and how it works. And I just, you know, do I buffer with crushed coral and all these different aspects of it. But it really, the comment of <clears throat> larger tanks are easier to maintain. And then, and then you, you paired that with my, my newfound, I'm testing every day. I'm seeing what, what, I'm seeing what's happening with my fish. I'm seeing what's happening with my tanks and water parameters. It's all these, it, this, this crazy combo of it brought it up again. Of, I don't think larger tanks are easier for, I really don't. I personally think the best beginner size tank is a 20 gallon tank, whether that be a regular 20 or a 20 long. I think you can do some amazing fish in those tanks. I think you can learn a lot in those tanks. And you know, I'll agree, it gives you that little bit of leeway on a properly stocked tank. If you miss a week, life's busy, you don't do water changes, whatever. <laughs> if you overfeed, if your toddler, your best friend chucks in way too much food, I think there, I think you can balance this. I really do think you can balance this. Um, also going off some experience is right after, shortly after I got that first 20 gallon tank, I was actually, I picked up a 75 gallon tank. <laughs> Um, and then we got gifted a bunch of fish for that tank, um, by an old coworker of my wife's. And that was my first experience with a quote unquote larger tank. Um, we had a group of adult convict cichlids in there. We had a yellow lab Mabuna in there. We had a Jack Dempsey in there. We had, um, a red tail catfish, which I now, which I now know is a red tail catfish. Like we had no reason for even having that fish in there, but now I understand what that fish was and why it was eating, you know, five plus cubes of blood worms and five plus cubes of brine shrimp a day and, you know, slipping and all of a sudden uh, the Mabuna had kind of disappeared one day. What else did I have in that tank? Is that it? Oh, we had a, a, a pike cichlid in that tank too. So I mean, it was, it was awesome. Like it was, it was such a random tank, but it, I had two rated 40 gallon hang the back filters from top fin on that tank because at the time without, I say, I didn't understand all filtration. I didn't understand, you know, different things. I didn't understand all this. All as I read was, oh, these are rated for 40 gallons. So if I put two of them on there, it's rated for 80 gallons. Like this, this would be great. No. I, I went through renditions of, I got so tired of draining to a bucket, dumping it to where I actually started like, I would take a piece of PVC pipe, running out the dog door we had. Cause the way the house was set up, it was in the back room where the dog door was. And this was the first house I had with Jordan when we got married. Um, I would run a piece of PVC pipe through the dog door. 
I put my siphon tube in that piece of PVC pipe to drain it out into the yard because I got so tired of hauling buckets, you know, draining the buckets back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But that still didn't stop me from, I then, I had to then, you know, go match temperature to the, you know, the tub faucet, fill up a five gallon bucket, bring that over. And I had some big fish in there. I was feeding so much because I had big fish, you know, big fish have to eat a lot to where, I am shocked that I didn't lose fish in that tank. I'm shocked I didn't lose fish in that tank because it was, it wasn't green water, but the water and it was always cloudy. It was always murky. It never looked great. Um, but there was just, I learned so much from that tank of, I, I was a beginner and a 75 gallon tank was just way too much. It was just so much. It finally got to the point. I think the best filtration I had on there was I built an overhead sump out of a planter box. And I think that was the only time that we actually had like some decent clear water in that tank of, we had adequate filtration, we had adequate mechanical filtration, we had adequate biological filtration. So it was just all these things that just, just it, was, it was really interesting to learn. So yeah, with having that, that comment again of larger tanks are easier to maintain, there's some truth to that, but it just sparked it that I love this debate. And say for me, I recommend 20 gallons is, a, I think, a fantastic starter tank for most people. That's why I really think this uh, <coughs> flu ball is going to be a perfect one, too, for a beginner. But all right, what do we got here? Blake, I appreciate you, man, for uh, boosting me up here. I really do appreciate it. Yes, hitting the like button does help. Um, I know that I actually had some individuals reach out to me about it, – it's, it's like the SEO, the search engine optimization of YouTube that <clears> – <throat> On the back end, we kind of suck at the SEO on our channel. Um, I've said it before, but I'll say, I, but it's actually happening this time around. Uh, we are growing the fastest that we ever have before. Uh, we, as you probably have all seen, we crossed over the four thousand mark, and we just gained another hundred subscribers. I think in like a week. So that's the most we've ever gained this quickly. Well, steadily, I should say. Um, but a lot of these individuals pointed out that on my live streams, the SEO is terrible. So one thing that absolutely does help is by you hitting the like button, if you actually are enjoying yourself, if you find this valuable information, this will push a notification potentially to somebody else that's not subscribed to the channel, kind of as a, hey, you may like this guy. Now, I wish though that I could like, um, program YouTube of when they kick this notification of being like, you know, caution, warning, do not wear headphones with this guy. He sniffs a lot. He makes funny noises, but hey, he's a, he's a good, he has good character. So I don't know. So yes, hit the like button does help. And I, I appreciate it, Blake. We, I try to do some fun things for the members. Um, and I honestly, I did open up two um, tiers of membership, you know, nine, it's a dollar for $5 a month. And I, one thing I've really been taking note to is anybody who shows up, you like the video, you comment on the video, you watch the video, you're here in the live stream. I want you all to know how much I appreciate that. I really do want you to know I appreciate that. And you are not missing anything by not being a member. I just, I never want to put things behind a paywall. I hate pay to play stuff. It's not pay to play. We do, we are, we're doing, uh, I'm playing through a Pokemon game, to be honest with you, on, uh, for the, the five tier, the, you know, the, the members, the squad of, it just, it just opens up to a much more casual, you know, small environment, which kind of hill, ch chill, hangout kind of thing. But then I, I have that dollar membership there too, because I still want to give things to the members. I still want to have that extra add a little thing. So I, I want, I really want to make, all parties across the board feel welcome, feel encouraged. You know, they're, they're getting some good things out of it. Uh, like last night, we did an old school live stream for the members where we were just chilling in the fish ranch, building in the garage, had the cell phone going, just talking, talked about, you know, setups and rack placements and tank placements and tank sizes. And it's, it was, it, it was a, a chubby guy in a, in a tank top, just sweating his ass off is really what it was, but uh, it's, it, they're fun times. So if you are interested in becoming a member, a lot of it is just kind of 
you get some you get some vaccine early stuff like we the members knew I had the Wabba Musters first, but then you guys know them. You'll you'll see all that. And um, if you're not following me on Instagram, I do post some different things on Instagram. Um, just you know, little things that kind of catch my attention and going on there. So it's well, you know, it's never pay to play. Um, you'll see. I plan on doing full spotlights of every tank and stuff there. But uh, Blake, thank you, my man. I, I really do appreciate it there. Really do appreciate it. What do we got here, uh, Tim? You have some. You have a fair point there. Of smaller tanks are more prone to death. That that is true. Um, I, I was lucky that I didn't when my fish died the first time around. I was very. I kind of got. I was frustrated, and I wanted to know why. I think the next day at work, well, when I had to go back to work, or whatever. <clears throat> I. I think I, I Googled like, why did my fish die? I, I think that's exactly like actually what I Googled, which led me to YouTube, which led me to the nitrogen cycle, which led me to, you know, the ammonia cycle and whatever you want to call it and different aspects and cycling and tank and making sure you have beneficial bacteria. And my, my, my mind just exploded of there's this whole new, you know, vast new universe I get to play in. Um, so I definitely can agree though, that a lot of, a lot of new fish keepers when they hit those challenges will back off from it. So that's why I, I, I think that 20 gallons, like it's a sweet spot for, for learning some good stuff there. But 12 year old me broke a 10 gallon tank once. That is a ridiculous amount of water. Yeah. Um, what was it? 20, how long ago was that? We just moved there three years. 26, 27 year old me had a 220 gallon tank break on it. And that was a, uh, whew, that was a, a ridiculous amount of water. Like 10 gallons is a ridiculous amount of water. Um, over a hundred gallons was an insane amount of water. And that re- was a, uh, $500 in carpet replacement. So that was a bad day. <laughs> that was a bad day. Whew, yeah. Bad day. Joe or not Joe? Yeah, Joe's here. What's up, Joe? It's good to see you, man. Yeah, it's been a little while. We're finally getting back in the in, back into the, the uh, groove of things, and we got uh, Jay hanging out with us, getting a new laptop and downloading Pokemon. Man, are you buying a new laptop just to download Pokemon? <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. Much more to maintain. Let's see. Is that small tanks? Uh, to long term, keep for smaller tanks. I don't have any issues, but I'm also uh, let's see. Constance doing maintenance. Yeah, it's small. I mean, the nano tanks, like, they can be fun. They definitely can be fun. Like, they're, like, 10, I mean, 10 gallon tanks are great, but it's also their, uh, I think that 20 gallon tank just brings in a nice balance. And then, honestly, from like the 20 gallon tank, the jump to, if people were going to say, I'm looking at a 55 or a 75, that's where it's like the jump to a four foot tank, 75 is the way to go. I think a 75. They'll have much more fun with than a 55. Um, I got a couple of 55s down in the fish room I'm going to be using and playing with. Primarily just because 75s, for whatever reason, are now like never available. Um, they're very difficult to find. But I, I think 55s you can do some good stuff with. I just think that four-foot tank, though, 75s are just that mm, sweet spot there. Sweet spot. Select Pant, what's up? It's good to see you here. It's fun to see everybody back here. So you basically, you're right. If you could put the time into them, we were in the, uh, that debate on, you know, beginner tank size though, is most beginners don't want to put the time into it. It's it. Sometimes it kind of takes that little bit of time for them to get so hooked where I'm okay putting hours a week into, you know, a small tank. I'm okay doing this. And, um, one of my more fun tanks I did was that, you know, filterless tank. We did a six gallon filterless tank. That was very intriguing to watch it it balance itself out of, of plants and floating plants and to see just how well the red root floaters did on that tank and just all the, you know. So there's definitely some in, intriguing things there uh, for sure. But a 220 is your house deciding it needed to remodel. <sighs> Man, that was a bad day. That was a bad day. That's actually why I've uh, – <clears throat> 
my wife uh, has vetoed large tanks in the house. She was only okay doing the um, – that's actually one reason why she didn't want a 40 breeder when we put it, uh, why, why she liked the uh, Innovative Marine is she even checked the, the seams and the seals and the silicone and how it was built. And she even said, like, this tank seemed like it's built way better. So, yeah, God, it was a bad day. But now if I break a tank in the fish room and one leaks, hopefully it just goes out the garage door and doesn't ruin anything. But – Got an octopus in for a customer, but I've always wanted to do an octopus. That's cool. Like I've always like, I know they're crazy escape artists, but I've always kind of wanted like low key want to do an octopus tank. I think it's super cool. Super cool there, man. Has anyone got any new fish recently? Personally got a new koi that's in five gallon quarantine bucket, but hopefully to get a pond within the next year. Well, hope you got a, hopefully you got a place to put that koi. But I mean, yeah, I got a bunch of new fish. Uh, members know what I got. I think I'm, I think I've talked about it in past live streams, but yeah, we've um, we I've I've got one, two, three, four. I have four tanks on the ground in this room right now that uh, are all holding fish for the fish ranch. They all came available kind of all at once, so I scrambled to get some tanks set up to hold them. That's why I'm really excited to get the fish ranch built is I can finally move everything off the floor to get them down there. But that's one thing I do miss about my pond back in Utah, though, is the uh, the goldfish out there. Those were awesome. Those were those were definitely fun there. Those were definitely fun there. Sorry, I just banged, just banged up everything there. I technically got 30-ish payo palette. You're pulling out scientific names on me. Palestris, palestris, the puffers. <laughs> cool little guy, a Caribbean octo. Now, is that one that says smaller? Because I've always wanted to do a smaller octopus. There is a guy locally that's keeping um, the shrimp things. We call them um, the mantis shrimp. Is that what they are? Like they punch stuff. <laughs> that thing is wild. It's like a peacock mantis shrimp. He showed me a video of it. It was freaking awesome. It was so cool. So cool. Just got some Corridorus. Is that the Polanian tensis? Pantalanian ensis? I'm going to say skunk Corridorus mimics. I can read that. I can read that. See, I'm excited because, um, well, I'm excited because I get to meet Blake and I get some new fish from Blake. Uh, with Blake moving across country, you know, getting that that bug to do so. I mean, I came I came east. He's going west. Um, I'm, I'm picking up some fish from him, and we're taking some of his quarries. So I'm uh, I'm I'm excited to play with quarries again. Like we, I tried ordering in. Well, I'm not gonna say I tried. I successfully ordered in the violet quarry. Um, they just decided to all die after two days of being here. So that was rough. But yeah, I'm definitely interested in uh, working with some with some quarries and stuff there. So I'm gonna be excited to see what that comes of it. And I'm I'm determined to breed these angels. I mean, they've already bred. I mean, they've laid eggs four times, three times, three times in this tank since I've had them. Um, so I'm excited to get them set up to properly where we can raise the eggs and all that kind of stuff and work with uh, the ram. We're gonna do we're gonna do rams again. So we're getting some rams from Blake too. I'm excited about. Out of two 40 breeders in a rack and a 29-gallon full-time quarantine grow out. Uh, since I seen you last before your move, my fish are going. Let's see, my fish are going completely ham. Fish are going completely ham. That sounds fun, man. You're added up two two 40s and a 29. So that's why I'm excited too to work on um, in this fish room is the small. I mean, the smallest tank we're going to have again is 10 gallons, but it's we're going to have more like three 29s. 340 breeders, 1020s, I think, 1120s. So it's going to be like, it's just more space I get to work with. I'm so excited. Oh, it's going to be amazing. I have seen the uh, Bulgarian seal point. Yes, they are. They are a very, very pretty angelfish. Um, there's actually a place here. Um, are they up in Houston or the Austin area? They're, 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 they're close. 
they're kind of Bulgarian seal. Wait, the best. They're, I think they're around Houston. Um, they were at the they were at the uh, Greater Austin Aquarium swap, um, but I, I've, I've talked to them through Facebook, and these are these are a stunning angelfish. They really are a beautiful angelfish. Um, I would say the picture they had is more is very close to what like, what Get Gills has here. Um, I know that they also had some though that were kind of their personal breeders that were more of this, this that greenish hue, silver body with those black fins. <laughs> They're a solid angel. Definitely a solid angel. I mean, that's, yeah, the angel fish we have here is a low-grade koi and a panda. So I'm curious to see what comes out of them. Kind of, it, it's, the goal on those is if I can raise enough of them, I know my fish store wants them to where if I can raise enough of them, sell enough of them, I want to use those funds to move into things like, you know, the Bulgarian seal points, a, a good, you know, I'm not sure I'm going to do the Philippine blues, like a good koi, but these, these more, these variants are all coming out there. Um, the, the black angels, I agree with you though, misfit, the black angel fish, like what Texas fish room has. Mm, beautiful i love me some full black angels they are amazing for sure they're amazing oh yeah joe koi are fun don't get me wrong like koi are definitely fun fish and this is the big old chubby goldfish but they are they're fun to feed too though uh, let's see here i'm excited for dan to post up his new order this coming week for sure i'll be placing an order with him yeah dan does some good stuff Dan definitely does some good stuff. What? All right, guys, we're kind of we're at that hour mark. I wasn't too sure how long we're gonna go tonight. Um, I still want to go play in the fish room. I gotta go. I gotta go paint some tanks. Uh, paint tanks. We gotta get plywood cut. But it's like, it's it's as soon as I get tanks painted. <laughs> It's really put up the uh, the I mean the air systems run. It's just hang airline, connect the pump. We're off to the rate. Like we're so close to being done. So close to being done. So I think we're doing some good stuff there. We still got a few things to pick out there, but hopefully everyone's doing well. Thank you, thank you for joining on the live stream. I enjoy these very much. I'm happy to be back on this, you know, groove again where we're doing more things we're doing some good things we're doing some stuff there um so good to see some old faces in here i'm glad you guys are all coming back in and we'll let's see here it's coming week should have a video up for friday um don't plan on a stream sunday unless i do one like on the road or something coming back from aquashella because we'll be at aquashella so um looking forward to meet all of you there uh, we'll see if we do a member stream tonight. It honestly depends on how late I'm going to go. Work. I really want to go work on the fish room. I really want to go work on the fish room. And we've kind of got some some lights still. I can go wash tanks out and get some things ready. Uh, maybe go cut some plywood. Because if I go cut plywood, that'd be, it'd be really off to the races there. But all right, guys. I appreciate y'all. Thanks for hanging out with me tonight. Have a good one. Uh, we will see you Friday. And yeah, Matt, we're, we're back on the, we're kind of back on the regular train now is that we've got life settled here in Texas, but appreciate y'all love you all. And we'll talk to you guys in the next one.